The Lord be with you. Thank you for joining me today as we prepare for this coming Sunday, the second Sunday after Christmas, which falls on January the 8th this year, the year of the Lord 2023. So here we are now in the second Sunday after Christmas. The, read, the three readings, our Old Testament reading, Epistle reading, and Gospel reading are as follows. The Old Testament reading is 1 Kings 3, 4 through 15. The Epistle reading is from the book of Ephesians, the first chapter, verses 3 through 14. And now we're in the Gospel of Luke, the second chapter, verses 40 through 52. The theme that ties the readings together for the second Sunday after Christmas is the Lord Jesus is found in the temple of his church. Again, the Lord Jesus is found in the temple of his church. So let us hear the lessons for this coming Sunday together and pray together. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Hear the word of the Lord. The Old Testament lesson for the second Sunday after Christmas is from 1 Kings, the third chapter, verses 4 through 15. The king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for that was the great high place. Solomon used to offer a thousand burnt offerings on that altar. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I shall give you. And Solomon said, You have shown great and steadfast love to your servant David, my father, because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart toward you. And you have kept for him this great and steadfast love, and have given him a son to sit on his throne this day. And now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king in the place of David, my father, although I am but a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in. And your servant is in the midst of your people, whom you have chosen, a great people too many to be numbered or counted for multitude. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, that I may discern between good and evil. For who is able to govern this, your great people? It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this. And God said to him, Because you have asked this, and have not asked for yourself long life or riches or the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right, Behold, I now do according to your word. Behold, I give you a wise and discerning mind, so that none like you has been before you, and none like you shall arise after you. I give you also what you have not asked, both riches and honor, so that no other king shall compare with you all your days. And if you will walk in my ways, keeping my statutes and my commandments, as your father David walked, then I will lengthen your days. And Solomon awoke, and behold, it was a dream. Then he came to Jerusalem and stood before the ark of the covenant of the Lord and offered up burnt offerings and peace offerings and made a feast for all his servants. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now the epistle lesson from Ephesians, the first chapter, verses 3 through 14. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love he predestined us for adoption through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, with which he has blessed us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ, as a plan for the fullness of time, to unite all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In him we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, so that we, who were the first to hope in Christ, might be to the praise of his glory. In him you also When you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it, to the praise of his glory. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And lastly, the gospel lesson for the second Sunday after Christmas comes from the gospel of St. Luke, the second chapter, verses 40 through 52. The child, Jesus, grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. 
Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was twelve years old, they went up according to custom. And when the feast was ended, as they were returning, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. His parents did not know it. But supposing him to be in the group, they went a day's journey. But then they began to search for him among their relatives and acquaintances. And when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem searching for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. And when his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us so? Behold, your father and I have been searching for you in great distress. And he said to them, Why were you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? And they did not understand the saying that he spoke to them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was submissive to them. And his mother treasured up all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. So far the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord Jesus is found in the temple of his church. The Lord Jesus grew and became strong. He increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and men. And as his body grew and as his body developed, his mind also increased in knowledge and understanding. For as our brother in the flesh, that we might have redemption through his blood, he lived by faith in the word of his Father. Thus he was catechized by his parents, who took him up to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was of age, he gave attention to the Holy Scriptures in his Father's house. Christ Jesus is still found in his church, in the word of truth, the gospel by which we are adopted by his Father and by which we are sealed by his Spirit. Thus do we gain an understanding mind to go about then our vocations discerning between good and evil. And so do we also go up to Jerusalem and we stand before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, that is, in Holy Communion, his body and his blood. Amen. We continue now with the prayer of the day for this second Sunday after Christmas. Almighty God, you have poured out into our hearts the true light of your incarnate word. Grant that this light may shine forth in our lives through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We are bold to pray together as he has taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.